Hello everyone, Cody Leist here with the, from the Ledger Independent, sitting with Mason County football coach David Buchanan. David, thank you first of all for your time. I want to go in and talk about your ball club as you guys entered the bye week 4-0 at the start of the season, knowing that you guys are going to lose a lot of kids to graduation and obviously with attrition and injuries were going to be a, a factor in this season. Did you guys ever expect that you guys would be going to the bye with this record? Uh, you know, really as a coach, you sort of take it one game at a time. And uh, I, I try not to even think a whole lot about what our, our record would be even at the end of the season. Just take it one game at a time and then uh, you hope that you get to November and if you feel like you got a shot every Friday night, that's pretty good. But uh, but, but I, I think your point, which is a good one, we've had a lot of injuries already. We were thin to begin with, uh, but our kids have responded well. Uh, we've got surprisingly more depth uh, than even than I realized. You know, we're sort of working on doing a little inner squad seven on seven and a very light scrimmage uh, tomorrow for Thursday. And uh, we've got a little bit more depth than I thought. Uh, you know, I think it's a combination of good kids, uh, good football players, and I, I think we've got great assistant coaches. And I think they've done a great job of developing some guys. Our JV team won at Montgomery County Monday night 14 to zero and had some guys really improve. So uh, I, I really wish we had everybody, but uh, I'm pleasantly surprised that we have the depth that we do have. Now you're going in and looking through the first four weeks, what has been the biggest factor to you guys having the success that you've had consistently? I think we've got great kids. Uh, you know, there have been a couple times I think the wheels could have come off for us and they didn't. Uh, I just, uh, I think that's the bottom line. I think I think our kids have been through a lot. Uh, the guys that are seniors, when they're from their freshman to their sophomore year, we were in that seven game losing streak. And they still know what it what it's like to lose. They know what it's like to lose a lot of ball games. They know how tough it's been to get to this point. And I just, I, I do, I really, I like the character of our guys. Last year, Rico Hill played more of the fullback role and, and really surprised some people when he goes in and gets those quick hitters for you guys. This year, he's the predominant back for you guys, and he's not supposed to be surprising people, but yet the way he's been able to carry the ball very well for your ball club, what has been his success this year taking on that bigger responsibility? I think it took him a little while to get going. Uh, he actually had – he he didn't really get going till later because we had something – we had, we had an injury with him we were bringing along. And it took him a while to get, get ready for game speed, dealing with fatigue. Uh, and that's why he was a little bit of a slow starter for us early. But uh, as he's gotten more reps, he's more comfortable at tailback. Our offensive line's done a really good job. And our passing game's been strong. And, you know, the best friend for a tailback is an O-line and a good passing game. And the best friend for a quarterback is a, is a running game and a great O-line. And, and you put all that together, you know, they usually help each other out pretty well. Going on to the way that you talk about the, having a good quarterback, let's talk about the balance part that you guys have offensively leading the way with Bradley Boone. For him to come in and make the strides that he's done since Jake's been out with the knee injury, what kind of things have you noticed in his progression from the start of fall camp to now that have really – open your eyes and open the eyes of not only your coaching staff, as well, but also the opponents? Well, uh, one thing that Bradley's improved dramatically with is in calling our run game. And, and Jake O'Mara deserves a lot of credit for that. Jake has been really good to Bradley and has helped him to learn our run game and, and to learn our checks. Uh, I think Bradley's chemistry with our offense and our guys has improved substantially since we got started. Uh, you know, all guys lead a little bit differently. Uh, you know, but Bradley, I think, has sort of found a way that fits him well, and he's communicated well. And, uh, and I think going back to the Ashland scrimmage, he did well, and I think that gave him some confidence. And, uh, you know, he continues to play better each week. And, you know, a quarterback's only as good as the guys around him. And, and I think right now his old line, his receivers, and his running backs are playing well. And, and, you know, all of that feeds into helping Bradley and to help our team have success. And let's talk about those receivers. You guys have a bevy of kids that you usually go to, to to hit him or that he can hit for big gains, whether it's Frame or Johnson or, or even kids out of the backfield. I mean, we'll talk about this, the receiving core that he has and how he's been able to develop chemistry with them as each week progresses. Well, to his credit, uh, when, when we found out in 
mid July that you know he was going to you know we're going to get a good shot at playing that spot. He he got those receivers together on his own, and those guys came out and threw quite a bit. So they got off to a really good start, and then it's just continued to progress. But uh, you know those guys uh, they're very well coached. Harry Lewis and Chris Oler do a great job with them. Uh, they're you know, they, they can pretty much play and not have to think a whole lot, if that makes any sense. And, uh, you know, Bradley continues to learn and understand better where those guys are going to be. So, you know, this week what we've done with, uh, with RJ going to be out, you know, for, for a time period. I don't know how long, but he'll be out for a, a time period. Uh, we moved Will Griffith to wide receiver. Will looked, has looked really good. I mean, we think he's going to be a good one. And I just, you know, I, I talked about it earlier. When you got good kids that are good football players and you got really good position coaches, assistant coaches working with them, I think you got a chance to develop some guys. And, you know, with Will, you got a senior that, uh, you know, has played a lot of football. And, and, you know, in our offense, he's going to catch a lot of passes doing different things. So I think he's made the transition well. And uh, I'm, I'm excited that, uh, you know, we've got another guy we can get on the field. And when we get uh, RJ back, uh, you know, we'll just be that much better. And everything with the offense has to start with the offensive line or nothing will work. But this group, the offensive line, it, it has been pretty particularly thin this year. But talk about how they've been able to battle through some of this adversity they've been dealt and have been able to really get you guys into some very good situations. Well, Sam Felice has done a nice job for us at center. He's, he's really added a lot of stability for us there. Taylor Saunders at left tackle, he's been solid in his spot. Uh, John Combs Buchanan, he's another returning starter there. He's played well. What we've had to do, though, uh, because he also plays a lot of linebacker, uh, and we've been really fortunate here. Uh, Gavin Gardner has developed into a nice tackle and guard. And so at times, John Combs and Gavin can share that guard spot. And uh, Gavin, Gavin's a nice athlete, and he has come a million miles as a football player. Then on the right side, uh, you know, somebody you may not know much about, but as a Outstanding football player is Aaron McGowan. Aaron's very strong. Uh, he's got good quickness and athleticism. He's also a very good defensive end. And then at right tackle, when Gavin and John Combs are alternating at that guard, uh, Ronnie Staggs has done a really nice job at right tackle. He's continuing to improve. Right now, Ronnie is a better defensive lineman. If we can get him to play as well on the offensive line as the D line, I, I think we'll be in really good shape. And uh, then the added bonus of because we were without Aaron for a week or two, uh, we've been able to get more reps to Jay Stanley, Jacob Cobb, and uh, Cameron O'Hearn. And those guys are improving. Cameron O'Hearn had an outstanding ball game against Montgomery County Monday night. So, uh, you know, again, uh, I think we've got a really good offensive line coach, Jonathan Thomas. Jackson Toll has been a great addition because where we're thin, we've – those guys are all getting coached. Uh, coach Thomas and, and uh, Coach Toll are doing a wonderful job with them. And, you know, you know, I think I think they're good kids at work, and, and that, that goes a long way. Let's switch over to the defensive side of the ball. You guys have gone in. And after the Newport game, you guys have really been that defense that has given up some yardage, but it has not really broken. Uh, obviously, with the points, you can tell you guys are able to go in and really sign your opponent's offenses at the right moments. What has been their biggest strength as they've progressed through the year? Uh, I, I think their biggest strength is their experience. A lot of those guys have played a long time. They've got a lot invested in our program and in their team. And, you know, if you look at them, uh, Ashton's a three-year starter. John Combs is a four-year starter. Uh, Rico – or uh, uh, Tarion Fox comes in. And just a sophomore, but goodness gracious, I don't think you can underestimate what he's meant to our defense. Sometimes he's like having 12 guys out there the way he runs. Uh, Mason King and Will Griffith have started off and on for three years. Cameron Frame is a three-year starter. Uh, I just I think we've got a lot of experience, and uh, then uh, well, and Taylor, Taylor Saunders and Sam Felice started some as sophomores, and then you know Harvey, uh, he he's a guy too that sort of come on that, uh, had, you know, just had a huge off season and it's really paid off for him. So I think all those things have factored in and uh, have really you know led to having. I, I think we've got a pretty good defense and. Uh, you know, we're trying to develop some depth there. We may look at uh, – we're definitely going to move Chris Dunn away to corner, and we're also going to look at using Rico Hill and Andrew Coons back there. So those are going to be some more guys that can run and can hit, uh, good athletes. And, and again, 
it'd be nice to have more depth, and I, I hate it for our kids that have been hurt, uh, and, and it is tougher without them. But, uh, you know, 15, or 20 years ago I was at Paris, we had 27 guys. That was 9 through 12. And we had a handful of guys that were, I mean, they were great players. But we also had a lot of guys on the field that, uh, you know, they gave a good effort, but I, I don't know that it was really good that some of them may have been out there at times. But so I guess what I'm getting at is, is relatively speaking, for me to have 35 guys and they're all either playing now or will play, for what I'm used to and, and sort of some experiences, we, we've still got quite a quite a few good football players. And, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, those different experiences from the past, they'll help your perspective a little bit. You talked earlier about John Collins, the way he's been able to alternate from offense to defense. He's getting closer and closer to that career tackles mark here at Mason County. I know as him being a coach of something like I maybe downplay a little bit, but talk about his performance through these four years here at Mason County. and. If he's getting closer, once he gets closer and closer to that mark, as a coach and as a dad, watching him put his name in the record books is something that's got to be really special for you. Well, you got me there on several levels. Uh, his performance over the past four years, uh, as his coach, uh, he's really been a guy that has been able to. We've been able to plug in and fix some things along the way. He started off. He started off because we needed a defensive end, and you know. Uh, that was our two and eight season, and uh, you know, he, at that time, I'm, I would say he might be one of those guys. I said, I'm not sure he's got any business being on the field, but he gave us a great effort, and that's the thing he does. He, he gives us an outstanding effort. As time goes on, I think that what's happened for him also has been he's had some great players around him. I thought last year might have been the best defensive front we've ever had, and a defensive front is the best thing a linebacker can have because that keeps the blockers off of him. And, and John Combs benefited from that. And all our linebackers did because uh, you're going to struggle to block our front four. You're going to, you know, you have your hands full trying to get our linebackers. You know, now after a while, he's had some success. Uh, he's gotten some recognition for that. Things have gotten tougher for him. He's getting schemed a lot more. Uh, people are, they've sort of got him circled and they're, they're trying to get to him and block him. Uh, that helps our defense because uh, that helps free some other guys up. But, uh, you know, it's had to push him a little bit. And, you know, as far as the record and things like that, um, that might be more sort of a family type thing that he and I may talk about. Uh, as a coach and, you know, in this locker room, I mean, what, what we've done in the past, if somebody sets that kind of record, we'll present them a football at the end of the season. But, you know, in, in 23 years, uh, you know, we've never tried to intentionally get a record. And I know that's not what you're asking me, but, you know, you, you, you you, you know, you want to you want to be fair and give people shots and stuff, but you want to be consistent. And you know, uh, I, I don't I don't know if he'll get that record or not. He may. Uh, I would love to have some running clock games where he doesn't get as many reps. That would be great. Uh, the D front is his friend and his foe as far as the record goes because yeah, I, I think Harrison County said we can't block you. And so we're going to get in doubles and throw the ball all night. And, you know, that's not a great setup for an inside linebacker to get tackles. But, uh, you know, the record would just be uh, an extra gravy for him. Uh, he, he really – he wants to win. Uh, one of the biggest – I mean, I've made a lot of mistakes. The biggest mistake I've made uh, – or not the biggest, one of the biggest as a coach and as a dad is for 19 years – or his 18 years – I, I, unfortunately, I bring a loss home every week. Uh, there's a lot of weeks I bring home a win that I'm not happy with. And uh, unfortunately, I really have drilled into my son that losing is awful and it's unacceptable. And, uh, you know, he just, he just wants to win. If the record happens, that's great. But uh, bottom line, number one, he wants to win. And number two would be if he plays well, he's pretty good. Uh, and, and I always hope that those two things happen because if they don't, uh, he's not going to be a happy guy at home, and uh, and that's going to get everybody else going. Of course, and then it always goes back to it's my fault. So uh, hopefully things will work out. And, and you know, again, if as long as we're playing and we're winning, he's happy. When you look at everything as a whole, offense, defense, special teams, who individually or what groups specifically do you feel have been the most pleasant surprises for you this season? Pleasant surprises. I think number one is Tarion Fox. 
he has done a great job at inside linebacker. At times, I feel like he's he's uh, two players because he can cover so much ground. Maybe one of the best plays I've ever seen here Friday night when uh, he ran down that long pass against Harrison County. That was one of the guttiest, best plays. Uh, I'm going to share this. Uh, this is one of those cases I've got a little inside information. Uh, Tarion was really upset when they scored because – he felt like, which he's wrong, he felt like it was his fault that they scored because he wasn't in that particular area. It was because he was reacting to the play and it got him out of position and it, it wasn't his fault. Uh, he, was, he gave us a great effort, but he, he really, uh, he's got a great passion for the game. He wants to do well. Uh, when, he's, when he fumbled, you know, I won't go into too much detail. I, I know more because my son's playing right there next to me. And, and John Combs thinks a lot of him and, and he's got a lot of respect for Tarion. Uh, but I know he was so torn up about that fumble. And, you know, he, he made up for that. You know, he ran that trap play pretty well. But he's been a big surprise. You know, talking about surprises. I thought he was going to be good. I thought that Tarion probably – I wasn't – when we went into the season, I didn't even know that he would start. Uh, we thought going in that we would alternate Rico and Andrew with that inside backer. And Tarion just had a great preseason. He keeps building on it. He's been a great offensive player, too. Uh, I think another big surprise for us has been uh, Harvey Rice at defensive end. He had a phenomenal offseason uh, working with uh, Ben Prather. And Harvey has gotten so much stronger. He's more powerful. And he's done a great job there for us. Uh, other than that, as far as a surprise, I, I don't know that there are any more. Well, there is one of them, Gavin Gardner. Gavin didn't even play last season. He started to play and really wasn't getting a whole lot done. And we had a heart to heart. And, you know, Gavin probably made a wise decision last year to move on. Uh, he, he, but he's come back and he wants to play. And sometimes guys go through that. They're here. While they're here, they take it for granted. They don't appreciate it. They get away from it. And then when they come back, they've sort of got a renewed idea of what it is they want to get accomplished. They appreciate it more. And that's where Gavin is right now. And Gavin is playing extremely well. He's much, much tougher. If you told me he would be playing this much both ways, I'd say there's no way. Uh, but Gavin has just come a million miles as a football player. And uh, I, I've been tickled to death with him. We've got a lot of young guys like an Aaron Mack, a Casey McKee, uh, Isaiah Chambers, that in different spots have really shown some things. They may, maybe later in the season or even next fall before that shows up on Friday nights. But we've had a lot of young kids, I feel like, that are really starting to make some strides. And, and again, the nice thing is everybody in this locker room is either going to play this year or they're going to play down the road. Uh, I, just, I just think we've got a lot of good kids. I really do. Now, as you guys are starting to finish up the preparations through your bye week to get ready for next week with East Carter, what do you like about the bye week and what are your biggest concerns through this week in general as you've gone through so many of these in the past that you guys have to go in and really get your kids to to refocus maybe re-energize knowing that you don't play this week but you got to game next week well we've tried to have a purpose with our practices and uh you know each position coach picked out what they wanted to work on fundamentals and drills to get better we've talked about that i know for me at the quarterback position uh we've worked on our drops uh, you know, we need, to get, we need to get more depth on some of our drops. We've worked on that. We've worked on carrying out fakes. That's something that needs to improve substantially. So, you know, we, we've tried to emphasize that. I hope that when we play against East Carter that that work shows up. Uh, we've worked on some of our short passing game. But each, each coach has taken some fundamentals and things they want to improve on to give us a focus. I think that's helped us. Um, we're going to try to get to develop a little bit more depth. Uh, we've also tried to sneak it in and build it in. We've tried to condition them pretty well this week, too, build it into a lot of drill work. And, and also, sometimes in season, you can't really slow down and maybe work your footwork with bags, turnover circuit, tackling circuit, uh, the heads-up tackling stuff, defeating a block. We've been able to do some station work there. So uh, we, we've had two of those days so far. I think they've been very productive. We've practiced well. Uh, it's been two of our better practices. Uh, you know, some some teams really struggle in the bye week. Others, for whatever reason, these guys have excelled. I hope that's because they realize that at the most we've got 11 weeks left. At the most, that's the best case scenario. Uh, I hope they understand how hard we've got to work to reach our goals. And 
you know, I, I hope that, uh, you know, they feel like that's something we can get and we're going after. And you also got to figure this is the last time you're facing a lot of your district opponents when you guys move up in the alignment next year. So this has got to be a lot of extra emphasis on trying to end the series with some of these teams with wins. win. I, I mean, that's a good point. Um, you know, I mean, really, as a coach, you know, sort of week by week, regardless of who we're playing, um, and, and, you know, we definitely won't win our district and we won't win our district next year again. But uh, it, it is. It's going to be a little bit different. And, uh, you know, uh, we'll get ready each week and enjoy it and, uh, you know, ho hopefully play well. David, thanks for your time. Hey, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh -huh. David Buchanan.